trickling in. The, uh, the jokes are getting going in the chat, that's fun. Um, but uh, we'll get started um, to, to get going on time here tonight. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's great to see uh, all of you here and uh, we're really excited to be hosting this tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Torrance and I work for the Wilderness Committee. Uh, along with my colleague, Em, we're thrilled to be uh, hosting this conversation tonight. Um, we're lucky enough to uh, have done a little bit of work in support of the Mom to Gala. And uh, the territory is, is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And, uh, and I'm excited for the opportunity to learn some more about it uh, and some of the work happening uh, within the community this evening. I want to acknowledge that uh, I'm calling in today from the unceded Lipongan territories of the Songhees and Esquimalt peoples, and that wherever we're calling in from, we're, we're sitting on unceded territory, we're sitting on land that uh, belongs to an Indigenous people, and that that needs to be at the heart of uh, what we do and how we carry ourselves and, and solutions that uh, center those people in those communities and, and uh, move towards the return of land to Indigenous peoples, that's what uh, we need to be rallying around and, and centering in, in everything we do. Um, so with that said, uh, tonight uh, we have three amazing uh, speakers uh, from the Mamtegela and uh, I, we're going to turn it right over to them. Uh, we'll, hear, we'll hear from the three speakers and then I'll pass it over to my colleague Em for a kind of a Q&A session uh, from, from those of you listening. Uh, this is being recorded uh, and it'll be posted. I think it's uh, streaming live on Facebook right now and it'll be up there. Uh, after this, we can share it around and, uh, and we'll close with some ways that we can support uh, Mom to Gala in, in various capacities moving forward. So our first speaker tonight is Dakota Smith, who will talk about the rematriation project at Helidi, uh, which is an exciting initiative on the land at a historic Mamtegela village site. So uh, Dakota, I'll pass it over to you. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, for those of you who it might be hard to speak uh, Kwakwala, uh, you can call me Dakota. And um, I think it's hard to really talk about um, the project without um, going into history, right? Because this is um, like, uh, I would say around a hundred years in the making. Um, it goes back to when uh, our, our, the Mount Gila were, amalgamated with with the Tlaloitsis he's in uh, the early 1900s I, I believe and um, uh, botched by the by the government the DIA and you know they made promises that they never kept and eventually they they moved um, well they put residential schools uh, in uh, their residential school in um, St. Michael's residential school in Alert Bay and you know there's no place for uh, our people where our kids aren't right so that's part of uh the many reasons uh that uh some of these villages is all over Pohokok territory uh were abandoned right and um so today uh well since uh 2018 i personally have been working on this on this project uh getting um, trying to get grants and trying to build. Uh, well, we did, we built a tiny house, but that was with uh, community support. Um, and in Victoria, it was built, Victoria, BC, um, Coast Salish Territories. And, uh, you know, it was built with the support of many uh, friends and, and, and family. And uh, so we had that built. And then I, I went into a uh, our territories, our Mamdagila territories, to uh, find a road that we could get to to Helity because um, uh, currently I, I you know I don't have a I don't have a boat and it would, there's no dock there right so I had to find a find a road that we could travel and and, and we got pretty close but I had to start actually uh, making uh, a road well. It was there prior, 
but you know trees had grown up and so we had to rebuild it i guess and clear some of the pathways there and we were able to do that with again the support of a lot of friends and family um uh, some of the people here on, on, the, on the panel, you know, my, my relatives here, Seneca and, and, and uh, Randy. Uh, um, and uh, I see Matt Ambers in the, in the attendees list. He was also, was also a big help and, and came on some of our trail builds. And, uh, and so we went there and we started building other structures, canopies, with lofts and for storage and uh, have people housed there and, and um, you know, we have a kitchen there. Uh, recently we got um, solar panels. So we were relying on a generator and gas, right? So we're trying to to have some balance, you know, in this world where it's, it's uh, a fossil fuels, right? And we want to not be um, polluting our world while we're trying to live off of the land. And again, you know, like uh, we're we're standing on 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 the shoulders of, of giants. People have been uh, trying to um, make this happen for a long, long time. You know, decades. And so, uh, on the way to uh, uh, building this, rebuilding this old road, we find this uh, sign on a, on a tree, and it says uh, "Mump Tequila First Nations." Visitors welcome, and the thing is, I told I, I mentioned earlier, right? This is uh, a thing in the making of around a hundred years, I'd say, and and this sign couldn't be more than twenty years old, you know. And it, and it was reminded me of um, in twenty ten, uh, my grandfather uh, Basil Ambers he held a feast at the Eve River Rest Stop area, uh, just north of of Sayward. And uh, and he had a feast there, and around over sixty chiefs came, an acknowledgement of, uh, of this feast, which was to declare Montegilla sovereignty that we were independent, and and that you know if, if the government wanted to do something with our lands, they should talk to us directly, not anybody else, and that uh, we were uh, declaring that right, and so you know that's something that's recognized amongst our people, amongst the Kokokwa nation. So it's nothing to take lightly uh, as uh, the only tribe that's not uh, recognized by the government, you know, being basically uh, extinct. And so, again, you know, seeing that sign there, it was like a, like a sign, a symbol of, of, you know, what we're doing was the right thing. And, and I mean, I've always known that, but to, but to see that, it was, um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, you know, like seeing my, my relatives speak to me. And um, so, yeah, Yulidi is uh, our old Mump Tequila uh, village uh, site, our reserve next to an old village site. And, uh, and um, uh, so we've got a tiny house there, like I said, and we're building other things, there are other structures. We want to build more bunk houses and and uh, uh, smoke houses and and uh, so people can go out onto the land. You know, elders and and youth uh, can go out onto the land and and, and practice our, our culture. You know, um, foraging for our berries and, and fishing and and getting elk again. You know, um, that's what it's for. It's for the people, and so. Um, right now, my mother is is there. She's living there, and she's you know she's a caretaker of the land. My mother Sauce Ambers, and uh, so her. I told you my grandfather was Basil Ambers. That's that's his oldest daughter. Was uh, is my mother Sauce, and so uh, and she's there. And um, I just visited her on the on the weekend. I dropped off my dog. You know. My, she, he, uh, my, my dog, she's protecting her, you know, I said, you protect my gra your grandmother. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, yeah, and uh, she's, she's the caretaker there right now. And I'm just, I'm just helping foresee this, this vision of, of our people returning to our lands and territories. And, 
And so uh, I hope that uh, in time we'll build a dock and we'll have a boat and we'll be able to bring our people to there from Alert Bay and bring them to our, uh, our other territories on the other side of the route and, and uh, call inlet. And so uh, eventually we can start uh, rebuilding there as well so that all our people can go home to all their, their territories, you know. And, I want to refrain from saying traditional territories because they are our territories now, right? Just because the government doesn't recognize it doesn't mean that's not real, right? It's real, and uh, and uh, it's ours, right? That's why we're um, exercising our jurisdiction over it and living on the land. That's that's the first step in it, right? And and uh, so we have uh, so many more. Uh, parts to go. This is just uh, the beginning and a and a long long battle with uh, DIA with the government, you know. And and we talk about uh, reconciliation. Well, I don't see any of that. You know, we're gonna have to make that, and uh, we'll have to make that real. You know, but uh, but it won't be. We won't see anything from from them from uh, from the government. But we have to make that. We have to make our our reality. The first step is envisioning it. The second act is is going onto the land. And um, I think the most beautiful thing we talk about fighting uh, colonization um, isn't just isn't just uh, fighting the government. That's part of it. But we need to build something, build something up, and that's. That's, uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, very happy to be a part of it. And I'm very passionate, you know, I've spent a lot of time since uh, 2018, like I said, we started building the tiny house, uh, 2019, going out there, finding the trails and, uh, you know, 2020, we were um, building more of the structures and uh, today, 2022, we've got the uh, we've got the, uh, the the solar panel system, and it's all hooked up. So once we build up another bunkhouse, it'll be it can be lit up for that, you know. And we've got um, we've got a lot of hands on deck. Another building party coming up next next weekend, and uh, yeah. So I, I think that's that's pretty much it for me. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Torrance, for for. Um, Hosting the space for us uh, digitally. <laughs> awesome! Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for that. Um, yeah, we're excited to get up uh, and help out next weekend um, with a few volunteers and uh, and get back up at Helity again. Um, that was a great, great sort of uh, way to set the stage. Um, I appreciated your comment as a as a non-indigenous person. The traditional territories piece always kind of. I always wonder with it too, right? You know, it's not just, this isn't just work. These aren't just territories that belong to your people in the past, it's it's now and, and you know, just territories <laughs> sums that up um, also. So I appreciated that reminder. Um, we'll now move on to, uh, to our second speaker. Our second speaker is Seneca Ambers. Uh, we'll discuss Mamtegela legal strategy uh, around recognition of title and rights. So sort of uh, some courtroom uh, work to, to complement and go with the on the land work uh, at Helity. Um, Seneca, I'll pass it over to you now. Gela Kesta, Torrance. Um, I'm, um, a member, I'm, I'm actually a member of Slawit Seas, but I am a Mamtegila, um, a Mamtegila person, that's me, that's my identity, um, I was one of the few people to get, a membership through Slawit Seas, um, and, uh, I'm, I'm also Namgis from my mother's side, and Plawit Sismap Degila from my father's side. Um, so, uh, gee, I guess, yeah, I guess we have to go back historically a little bit. Um, uh, I've, I, as a child, heard about um, the the kind of the ongoing um, uh, disagreement about uh, title and rights. Um, 
And at the time, um, that work was being done by a whole host of other, um, of, well, a lot of our, our Mump de Gila people who have now passed on, including my grandfather and my father and um, a whole bunch of other uh, of our members uh, did a lot of work fighting um, in a system that didn't have um, any proper parameters or, or proper policies. Um, uh, so that had been going on for a number of years. Um, and then, so um, I guess about 10 or 12 years, 12 years ago now, I actually went to go and work for Tlaoitsis. And that's when I kind of really got a really good understanding of how Indigenous Services Canada kind of worked and, um, you know, just how difficult it is for our people who are not, um, you know, that's not our system. The legal system isn't even our, like, that's not our system. That's not how we work. Um, and, I, I, you know, I think a lot of us realized um, that we had to get savvy really fast in the legal legal realm um, in order to understand how we went from, you know, having our own territory being recognized. We were recognized by Indigenous Services Canada at one point in time. Uh, I believe that was pre-1945. Um, and then uh, just like how um, Dakota uh, had explained um, through a series of, I want to say, unfortunate events for us, uh, um, we were effectively um, extinguished on paper, um, not in person. We are here very much, but on paper. Um, so uh, that occurred in 1993 through a, a BCR that was set out to... Um, it was in 93, 89, 89. Um, a BCR was sent out to Indigenous Services Canada. And in that BCR, three things happened. Um, there was for so there was an extinguishment of our title. Um, so we went from being known as the Slawitsis Mump Degila, which was what we were known. Um, because of an amalgamation that happened in 1945, where, uh, you know, I believe there were over 45 signatures on that paper um, from both the Tlaoitsis leadership and the Montegil leadership, all agreed that they would share resources and land and, and, um, uh, and that the leadership would be shared, it would be a shared, um, a, a shared uh, operation. So uh, in 19, I believe it was 1989, a BCR went out with two signatures on it from the current um, administration. Oh, yeah, thanks, Randy. It was 1998. Current administration um, had uh, basically uh, said that the uh, leadership of the Mump de Gila um, no longer wished to partake in, in the Indigenous services or in the in the current band structure system and that they were extinguishing their own title and rights and handing it over to the Tlaoitsis. And then the second part of that BCR was uh, a piece that said that the elders were um, had made the decision to make the current chief and council um, a chief for life. So custom code through Indigenous Services Canada, which um, I guess you know is is the equivalent to a dictatorship, um, in the sense that there are no elections, and there is no um, there is no way for members to truly um, be heard uh, in a meaningful way. And then the next, the last part of that um, was that they wanted to take the Montegilla name off of the status or off the status cards and off of all of Indigenous Services Canada documents. Um, so that had happened. I mean, that had been an ongoing thing for 
for many, many years uh, without that information being properly explained to the membership, um, to anyone. Um, and, and when I use the term Tlaoitsis administration, I'm not talking about our Tlaoitsis people because they, you know, um, they, they are two separate things. Our Tlaoitsis people um, are caring, kind, loving people and have, and most of them probably have no idea what's happening even in their own nation. Um, and so anyway, so that happened. And since then, I think our people have had many, many years of meetings and uh, have just tried to get to a point where they could um, challenge this. Um, so uh, I guess fast forward uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, we started having meetings again. Um, and uh, yeah, and then, and then, you know, it just kind of, it, it happened really fast and, and Randy and I have been meeting with uh, the chiefs, the Gigame, and um, we get all of our direction from them. So um, as, as we move forward, you know, we are meeting on a regular basis and, and uh, they are kind of steering the ship and letting us know what, um, what is, is the desire of, of our peoples and, you know, our families are, are, you know, we're, and we're dispersed, right? So we don't really have, we don't have a land base and we don't have collective, a collective uh, way of, of coming together on a regular basis. So that makes it very difficult to get the word out to our own people even. Um, so we're spending, you know, we, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, we all have, you know, full-time jobs and we're doing this on like literally on the side of our, our desks and whenever we can get a spare moment to, to do this work. Um, and, uh, and, and that includes our chiefs. They've, they've gone out and done a tremendous amount of, of their own uh, conversating with, um, you know, the people that they need to um, talk to as well. Uh, so we have acquired, um, we have acquired a, a lawyer, uh, Declan Redman, and he is, um, uh, and, and so I guess in a nutshell, what we are attempt, well, what we are going to do, because there is no attempt, there is just a do, um, is we are looking at um, the acknowledgement uh, from ISC and the government of Canada. Um, and, and it's more of a, just a reinstatement that, because it, we're not asking them to acknowledge us as, as a new band. We, we, we've, we're, already, uh, we're already there. We're already an entity. We are already um, a peoples, right? So, um, so we're just trying to you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's it it is about protecting our own territory, making sure that you know um, the territory is um, protected by our own people and not external bodies. Um, and at the end of the day, we're also, I mean, the other part of that is is Aboriginal title. Um, so we're also looking at, at that as well. And so there's been a lot of, of um, background work. Um, we have a huge, huge, wonderful, wonderful team of people who have been supporting us over the last couple of years, because um, we definitely can't do this alone. Um, so, you know, we have people who are updating our website for us. Um, we have people who are, um, you know, helping us fundraise and um, yeah, just like there's so many people in the background. Like I can't, I, I've got a list, a running list of, of all of the people who have been helping us and it, the list gets longer and longer and, um, you know, so much gratitude for all the people that have been helping us with this endeavor. Um, we've enlisted, I mean, I see, I know Matt's here and he's been, um, also very crucial to helping us with mapping and names and all of that and and history 
Um, but we also have, you know, UVic students and, and you know, help the, the law students there helping us. Like we, we definitely are, I, I feel definitely blessed with all of the support. Um, so, yeah, so we, we're, in, and so the last, I guess the last conversation we had with, with our lawyer was that we were given some homework to do. And so we're in the middle of doing all of that and just getting maps and all of that kind of stuff in order right now. And um, once that's in place, then uh, we, we just move forward and, and um, you know, uh, I have absolute faith that we will prevail regardless of, um, you know, like, like um, Dakota said, we're standing, we're standing on, on the shoulders of, of many, many people right now who have gone before us and have paved our, our way. So, um, so yeah, so it, it's exciting times. And I feel like once the, the sort of, we get past this one small hurdle of, of our homework, uh, we'll be able to, it'll, I think things are gonna go quite quickly. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit scary, but at the same time, I'm very excited. And, um, you know, this is something that uh, uh, our, you know, a lot of our ancestors, people who have gone on before us, um, have had, had wished for, and this was, you know, so we're just doing the work and, um, you know, our, our children and grandchildren and people um, who come after us will be the ones to benefit from this. So, yeah, I don't think, I think that's everything. I mean, I probably missed out on a whole bunch of stuff, but um, if people have questions, they can absolutely ask. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, I think you said there is no attempt, but there is no try, only do is a Yoda quote. So anytime you can quote Yoda on a webinar, it's a good one. I like it. Um, I forgot to remind folks uh, when I was uh, introducing things this evening, if you have, we're going to move to uh, Q&A after the last speaker. So if you have questions uh, while our last speaker is speaking or, or from the previous two uh, in the more, there's a tab called more at the bottom of your screen. And if you click on that, you'll see another thing that says Q&A and you can put your question in there and, uh, and we'll jump into those uh, after our last speaker. Um, so last but not least is uh, Mamtegela Hereditary Chief Makula or Randy Cook, uh, who will talk about the Tree of Life project on the territory. Uh, Randy, take it away. Kila kes dokula nashnimute. Nugwa makula keishen lacha Mamtegela. It's nice to be here. Thanks to Torrance and M for hosting this and getting us all together. Um, I also am coming from the beautiful territory of the Lekwungen, and uh, I'm happy to, you know, live and share and be and do all I can to honor these people, the, you know, the people of this land. So, yeah, um, thanks Dakota and Sen for, you know, some of that background work and what it is that we're trying to achieve here and moving forward to reinstate our title as Montagila people, but also reclaim our lands and, you know, uh, move, you know, try and get our people back to our land and develop some programs and all that kind of stuff. I think it's really important, especially at this given time, as we're constantly rushing against industry. So that's where my work kind of comes in. I mean, along with Sin, I mean, you know, I've been, I mean, I'm born Montagila, so I was born into this, you know, political matter. And I was raised my entire life listening to my grandfather tell stories about how he was never able to go back to his traditional lands. And it was something that had always stuck with me because he spoke about our territory so proudly and he just said, you know, one day, son, I hope, you know, you have the opportunity to go back and, you know, and see and be a part of our history of who we are and be proud to be Mumtagila. So I'm, um, you know, I'm Numgis under band administration. Um, my parents are both Numgis. I grew up born and raised in Alert Bay. 
Um, but my biological mother uh, was Montegila from the Madelpi family. And my grandfather was Gus Madelpi and his father, David Madelpi and his father before him, Sam Madelpi. So we've come from a long line. And my grandfather, David Madelpi, held the name Makula. He was the um, hereditary chief and he actually came from the clan of the Hamatam house, which is the, which is Hiladi. And he, um, in some of the ledgers and stuff that we've, you know, accumulated in research, um, you know, he held a very prominent role within that clan. So, so Hiladi would essentially be uh, my place, um, you know, a birthright to go and to kind of live and be. So the work that, um, you know, Dakota and my godmother Tas and everybody has been doing to activate Hiladi has been really special for me to see that come to life because uh, Hiladi translates the place where we make everything right. And I think, you know, to use Hiladi as a starting place to make things right, I think is very fitting. So, yeah, so the work that I do, you know, along with our court case that, you know, me and Sen have been, you know, heavily focused on um, is getting out onto our territory and, you know, getting out onto the land and looking at, you know, the old village sites. Um, and, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I actually, when my daughter, who is now 14, when she was born, I brought her back to Etikin along with a whole bunch of our elders and family. And we did a ceremony um, and it's called a 10 moon ceremony. And we gave her her name and we dipped her feet in the water. And it was my great auntie Irene uh, Cook who gave her the name Kasalas, which means, you know, walking in the sacred, in a, in a special place. And it was just very fitting, but it was a real eye opener for me because it was the first time um, I didn't know this at the time, but it's the first time that our elders had been back since before they were taken from uh, because of residential school. So it was very, very emotional. So when we were getting off the boats, there was excitement and there was tears and lots of emotion. But then after that all kind of, you know, subsided, the story started to flow. And one of my great uncles was talking about all the houses that were on the beaches and where they used to play and where the swings were and who lived in the houses. And it was just unreal. And it was in that moment that I knew um, because I was just becoming a chief then and I wanted to activate um, my land. I wanted to connect my chieftainship to my land. So I started doing ceremonies in our territory first so before I did anything in Alert Bay, I'd go and reconnect with our territory and I would, you know, do ceremonies. So, um, yeah, so it was quite special, like it was quite significant because, um, like I say, uh, going back, sorry, going back, um, you know, it's, it just really kind of reassured me of what, of the work that needed to be done. And I knew then I was like, I need to do something. If I'm going to be a chief, I really have to honor and uphold this position. And that means going back and looking at our ancient philosophy as Kwakwa Kiwok, not just as Mamtegila, but what does it mean for us as Kwakwa Kiwok people? Well, you know, these roles were put in place because we were the ones to protect the land and make sure that our people were taken care of. And I thought, well, I don't want to call myself a chief if I'm not going to do the work. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's just a title. I have to go. There's an obligation here. And then I, and what I started to learn through my, through my own research and stuff, which was kind of exciting, um, you know, it came across some newspaper clippings and stuff of my great grandfather, David Maddelpe, going to court for practicing his culture. And he was just resilient and he wouldn't stop potlatching. And I was like, shit, yeah, this is awesome. This is everything I need. I'm like, my grandfather didn't stop and my grandpa didn't stop. And, you know, they were cultural. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to carry that legacy forward. Um, so getting out onto the land and getting out in the territory is always special because then I know that I'm reconnecting with my roots and doing the work that I need to do. Um, 
So I did it again when my son, he's, my son is going to be, he's nine now. So even when he was born, we did a ceremony, same thing, you know, connecting, um, you know, him with our traditional lands and, you know, reaching into our sacred ceremonies and rituals and things like that. Um, but what I also started to learn is that the more I was going back to our territory, the more I was seeing more devastation from logging practices. And then, you know, it wasn't until, you know, meeting uh, Mark Worthing, who was out in our territory and started to kind of see and, you know, he was reaching out and asking these same questions. I can't remember now how we actually were kind of like ended up you know, like in a conversation, but um, it was just perfect timing in every which way, because it was the same concerns I had. I was trying to go back to our people, but as Seneca was saying, we're so removed from our land, you know, and we're so, you know, dispersed as members. And because we don't have our own band administration, um, there's nothing there to pull our people together, you know? So, you know, I've hosted potlatches now and I've hosted feasts to uphold and, you know, our tribe, our name. Um, and, you know, doing all of that work is, um, is important. And again, I just thought, well, what does it all mean if we don't have any land to go back to? So a couple of years ago, uh, we went out and all of a sudden it just kind of turned into like this tree of life team, uh, brought in like a film crew, brought some friends. And the idea was, let's just get out and document. Let's go and record and look at all of these areas that are being logged. And, and some of my discoveries, which I started to find was you know, seeing culturally modified trees that have been cut down in the process of logging. I think that was one of my big eye openers because on a personal level, I find culturally modified trees are actually more significant than any object in the museum. These should be protected. These should be the, the utmost protected, you know, things beyond all else because this is our absolute evidence of our existence in these territories. And it was these places that birthed our ceremonies, our rituals, it gave us all of our, you know, our gifts that we celebrate in potlatches. And without those, that evidence, it erases us and moves us from the land. And, you know, and then hands essentially gives, you know, the government the opportunity to say, well, you know what, out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, we're seeing it more and more and, it, and it's absolutely devastating. So putting together the Tree of Life team is really a mixture of um, scientists and artists coming together. And it was kind of an idea I did after I finished my master's program where I was doing a lot of work with Suzanne Samard and developing my thesis. So I started to reference some of her work in uh, tree communication. And as I was reading a lot of, you know, reading through her work, I was like, well, this is just exactly what we've been talking about for thousands of years. Uh, but now we've got science to kind of back it up. So this is exciting. So I called her up when we started chatting and I started sharing stories with her, um, you know, old stories from our culture about um, you know, life in trees and ceremonies and the beginning of rituals and the things we would do. But we as Kwakwakiwa, we're forest people. Everything comes from the forest. And, you know, we look to the forest as being female because it birthed all of our gifts. And essentially when our first ancestors, our myth beings, descended from the heavens and they transformed into humans, and built the first houses, those houses mirror the, the forest. So our big houses essentially are the womb of the female. And, you know, when we sing and dance in there, we turn before we dance. It's symbolic of a baby turning before it leaves the womb. You know, all, all of the rituals and everything we have are so closely related to these forests. So then again, the question keeps coming back to me, what are we going to do and how are we going to be a living culture without this connection to our forests? 
So there's more, you know, there's so much more that we're fighting for as Kwakwakwo, as Indigenous people, than just, you know, the title of land. We're, we're talking about our absolute essence. We're talking about our entire being, our language that comes from it, all of these things that have been taken away from us from, you know, for the past 150 whatever years of Canada. You know, you can go and look at some of these trees where the bark has been pulled four or 500 years ago, 600 years ago, you know? I mean, that's the evidence. I mean, that's everything. And, you know, and it's exciting to kind of hang out with a bunch of scientists who are like, hey, you know what? You know, one of the questions I was asking instead of, look, you know, the way we look at culturally modified trees, you know, instead of looking at it as the means of like harvesting bark or, you know, canoe making, you know, all of these different things, it was kind of cool to think like, you know, I asked Suzanne Samard, hey, if you pulled the bark on a tree, do you think that it would actually activate the entire area and the way trees respond? And maybe sending that tree more nutrients through the root system to kind of prepare it. So maybe if that was a really unique harvesting area for medicines and everything, maybe that would be a way of like, you know, you know, kind of, again, like I said, like activate that. And she was like, oh, wow, I actually never thought about that. It makes perfect sense. And, you know, for me, I was like, well, we were the scientists for thousands of years in, the, in these territories. Like we understood the vibration, you know, all of it translates through our songs and dances and our language, as I say. So, yeah. So anyway, I mean, so that's like the, the, the root of the tree of life team is, you know, to get out there and to kind of collect as much information as we can to try and find ways where we can protect what is left. So we can look at areas and, and all of the information that we collect is actually being handed over to the Mumtagila people that will help them in their court case. And I guess I should say us, they can help us. But, um, but that's the exciting part is because then we're extending beyond um, you know, our outreach because now we have the support of UBC. Now we have the support of the University of Victoria. So now we have institutions that can come and help us when we set up a, uh, areas for research projects. Um, and then those can be handed back over to the Montagila people once you know, we get a uh, banned administration, then you know, then we have all of these areas outlined in a way that all this work is already done. So then we can start looking at how we can develop in certain areas and we can start to bring our people back and essentially start to, you know, lay a foundation that's going to bring our people back. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to have our our people and the future generations reconnect with the land that our ancestors were taken taken away from. So yeah. So anyway, that's you know, like I say, the work that I do comes from stories and connections from my family. And you know, I hear listening to my grandfather's story when he was taken away because of residential school, you know, away from his home village, which was in Itzikin at the time. Uh, and he was brought to Alert Bay and he never really went back, you know. Um, so that's, you know, I think the root of our work with like Dakota and Seneca and, you know, like I say, my godmother Taz, who's living in Hiladi and she's being an absolute warrior and she's so phenomenal. And, you know, and I think if we can just keep that momentum going and keep inspiring, you know, younger youth and other people to come, then you know, then I think we're doing some significant work. But the, the other significant side, I think I'll say about the Tree of Life team is it's very diverse. And one of the perspectives that I'm keeping with the work that I'm doing as I move forward is recognizing that, you know, we can't continue to go back backwards to find answers all the time. We have to start moving forward. And we have to start thinking about the next hundred years and what we're going to do today is going to be very significant in, you know, in taking these steps. And I look at Canada in a, in a significant way now because everybody here in this chat room, we're all a part of this country. 
We now though, as indigenous people are put in a place where we are in a, we have an opportunity where we can share our beliefs and our philosophy on what sustainability is and what the land means to us and what unity means and how we protect each other and why we feast and how we nourish and all of these beautiful things. And, you know, we passa, we, we potlatch and we give and we can um, teach, you know, others these, these great attributes that we have. And I think if we can do that, we can also bring people in to celebrate and share who we are. And in turn, you know, we can all heal together. And, you know, I think that's a big part of the Tree of Life team is it, like I say, it's quite diverse because it's not, it's Indigenous led by, you know, myself, um, but it's about bringing others in with a different perspective with one common goal is how can we start to protect the land first and foremost? You know, we've got a lot of work to do and, you know, and if we can get in and challenge the government and change policies and, you know, have Indigenous peoples recognize their hereditary rights, Aboriginal rights and title, you know, and start accessing their land and utilizing their land and creating, you know, revitalization programs, whether it's language and culture, all of these things that will help our people to get back on the land so we can, you know, heal and then share that with the rest, you know, the rest of uh, Canada is going to be very significant in protecting what is left. Because if we don't, then, you know, we're going to just fall under this government that has removed us and that is going to continue moving down the path of resource extraction and destroying our planet. And I think, you know what, if we can all work together, we can do some good work. So, yeah, I think, you know, a little bit that's, uh, you know, some of the work, I mean, there's obviously a lot more to the tree of life and everything we're doing, but in a nutshell, that's really what it's about is bringing people together with one common goal you know, the betterment of uh, our forests and our waters and, you know, all of it and working together and healing together and learning from each other. I think that's the most important part is, you know, learning and celebrating diversity more than anything. Awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Randy. That was great. Um, I've, I see some uh, questions uh, stacking up in the, in the Q&A there down at the bottom. Um, if you've got some questions, uh, fire them in there and we're going to get to uh, as many as we can. Um, we're also, it looks like we're going to have a, a special guest speaker uh, in a minute here. So I'll introduce him in a second. Um, I guess to kind of get the question and answer uh, rolling, I, I wanted to ask, um, all three of you touched on the industrial activity uh, in the territory. And uh, I, again, I've spent a little bit of time uh, on Montegala territory at, at places like Helity and, and Tessium Creek. I've, I've seen the extent of the logging, but um, for those that haven't, and for, for folks like me who've spent maybe not as much time on the territory on the water, um, I'm wondering if, uh, if, if one or, or all three of you could, could speak a, a tiny bit about um, just sort of the scale of the logging, uh, you know, some of the companies that are doing it and, and the fish farming as well. Um, I don't know who wants to jump in on that one, but I'm wondering if, uh, if we could hear a bit more about that. I'm going to nominate Randy and Dakota. I think Dakota has seen it first at hand on a frequent basis. And I think Randy, You've seen lots of like mapping and stuff, so and and in person as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to these guys. All right, go for it, Dakota. I just uh, I spoke long enough there. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I mentioned, you know, uh, really started getting into this this work uh, in 2018. Well, uh, it was both. Before then, actually, 2017, um, and uh, I went out to the territories with a mutual friend of ours, uh, and uh, Randy's uh, Mark Worthing, and um, I really uh, got to experience seeing a lot of the uh, logging 
devastating logging that was happening in a lot of these watersheds. And you you look, um, I'm sure I have some footage somewhere um, that I should probably upload at some point, but it's just horrible entire watersheds and just like one block left of the lower uh, elevation old growth. And we went down there and we went into it hot as hell in the summer. And then you get into the forest and it's just so cool, you know, and you can finally take off your jacket and wrap it around your, uh, wrap it around your waist. And just that instance of feeling the, the you can feel the difference of the and the climate that it makes in, in real time doing that. And we went down to the, to the bottom by the, by the uh, river and there's these blueberry bushes there. And you could see trails through them made by bears. And so bears were actively using this last little bit of old growth uh, to get their berries. And um, I believe that was logged just the other year, you know, and so now there's nowhere for those bears to eat. And, um, a lot of work that I do, uh, I talk about communities and we need to think about what our communities are, you know, like they're our household first, they're our town, in the outer circle, our town, outer than that, our, our nations, our indigenous nations, and outside of that, it's obviously the forest and the forest has its own communities. We have to look at them as relatives, as neighbors, you know, to see, to see, um, you know, these bears losing some of the last bit of, of their nutrients, especially in a time when we're having fish farms too. So their their fish were scarce. Now their bears are being scarce. They're being hungry, and we wonder why they come into the cities and towns, and you know, we're taking that from them. And so. Yeah, it's devastating to see, and, and I, I go out in our territories all the time, and I see the the overlogging, and it's just you know, it, it really you know hit hit me right here in my heart, and I knew then I had to go out and 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 do something, and so so uh, I've you know I, I got involved, I got involved, and um, and yeah, so. Uh, um, you know, after the after the fish farm fight, which is still a thing, a re very real thing, and especially in our territories, we still have uh, three fish farms in Mumpligila territories, and there's a proposed fourth one, right? And uh, but uh, since the phasing out of a few of them, you know, I've seen some of the fish come back, and I've seen them on the beach at Helidi. And um, so that, you know, those things, they bring hope to me and it makes me realize what we can do when we come together as a community, as a collective to protect our other communities, our neighbors and the sea and in the forest. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> sorry, that's uh, it was very, it's a very heavy question for me. And I'm, I'm sorry about getting a little bit emotional, but um, it's, it's, it's real when we think about uh, the possibility of a world without salmon, a world without bear, a world without the cedar tree, the tree of life. Like, well, the, the, you know, that's why uh, Randy's campaign is the tree of life. It, it gave us everything. It gave us totem poles, canoes, gave us baskets. It's, it's our medicine. It's how we open up the big house when we potlatch. Like, how are we supposed to sing our songs without it? So uh, the devastation is real. Uh, logging, uh, there's been like multiple uh, log sorts in like a 10 minute radius of a drive from each other on our territories. And just now there's another uh, clear cut in Montbegula territories right along the highway. You can see it, there's no buffer between the highway there. It's just like, why is that the only area where they don't leave a buffer, you know? Right? We don't exist to them, but you know, as we can see, we're, we're here right now. There's three faces as you can see. So, and that's, that's all I have to say on that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, 
that uh, that one trip uh, out to the territories a, a little while back uh, that that I was on. I remember saying to you after a day and in the clear cuts, like you know, it it affects me, but I can't imagine you know how I would feel if if I belong to to the land like like you do. And um, you know, I guess I still can't, but. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate you you sharing that for everyone because it's a it's a super important uh, a part of it. Um, we've got some questions in the Q and A, but we've also got a, a request from uh, from Ernest Alford to to share a little bit. So, uh, Em, I'll have you turn on Ernest's uh, camera right now, and uh, we'll hear a few uh, words uh, words from Uncle Ern, and then uh, and then we'll jump into the uh, the Q and A. Um, I can see you there, Ernest. Uh, looks like you got to unmute and turn your video on, maybe. <laughs> there you are, sunglasses and all. Perfect. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Great. Um, I I do need to dip out. It, it, uh, I do have a dinner um, engagement. I wanted to first thank my relatives and my family there, um, Makwala and uh, Seneca and Randy for articulating in a really good way um, the struggle that our people have. I, I, I this is very dear to my heart because we are Klawitsis, we are Ma'am Tagila. And, um, and so it's really important to hear, hear this. And, and so I thank them for their work. And I, I need to say that. And I, I want to um, really emphasize though what it, what it means uh, for us to have allyship, uh, such as yourself, Torrance, thank you for your work. And there's people like Mark, and then there's our, our, our friends. Uh, that have joined us tonight to uh, really uh, makes it meaningful uh, for all of us. I want to make sure though that we, we don't go any further without saying that it's needed. Um, for so long, people don't listen to the, don't listen to the Bakum or the Indian people. And it, it really, it, it's really come to a head now where we are, are being heard because um, our voices matter. And that when you have allyship like this, it, it's really important that, uh, that the non First Nations people speak up and back what we're saying. We don't want people uh, coming into our, what is our um, territories and to continue to abuse and extract and, and um, make money off of what is traditionally ours. And thank you for reminding us, Dakota, about uh, that phrase. Um, I, I also just want to say how appreciative I am for my relatives, my family there, um, for being very transparent. I mean, let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade here. John Smith and the Hawitsis administration uh, is robbing the people. And we need to be really clear and very, very honest about what is happening to our, our family members here. We see none of the uh, benefit agreements that uh, they have signed. And, um, and I'm not afraid to call it, call it out anymore. And I think we're gonna need to do that. Um, and so the, my ask for everybody is to uh, write a letter to the DFO, write a letter to the province of British Columbia and uh, demand that our, our title and rights are recognized here. Um, we're calling to an end of extraction until there is, a, there is a, some clear agreement between uh, the people and, and clear understanding of, of our uh, title and rights and recognition. Um, the logging has to stop. The fish farming has to stop. And so to, all, all one needs to do is take a look at the Broughton Agreement in terms of the fish farm uh, issue and the fact that we have now collectively between the Broughton Archipelago and the, and the Discovery Islands have effectively removed 34 fish farms. Uh, there is a date in front of us right now um, where the Federal Minister of DFO, Joyce Murray, needs to hear from us because uh, 79 fish farm licenses are on the chopping block. 
She needs to understand that we don't support the, the renewal of any of those farms along the entire uh, um, coast of BC. And I think uh, she's heard us and she knows us. She just needs our support. And so I'm asking everybody to, to, to take that action and, um, and to write to the minister, but to include uh, the John Horgan, John Horgan NDP administration, their uh, caucus needs to understand that we are winning every single time and, that, and, and to encourage our allies, our non-First Nations uh, friends to get behind this cause, get behind uh, what we're collectively calling for the end of clear-cut logging and for the end of open pen fish farming. Um, it's, it's quite simple. It just takes a few minutes to make uh, that stand. And if you have to write multiple letters, then do it because, uh, because um, it, it just cannot continue. And so I wanted to add that and I wanted to make sure that my relatives know that I fully support them wholeheartedly, but I also wanted to just uh, convey my respect and my appreciation for um, our friends our non-First Nations friends who are standing behind us. And I thank you very much. And um, with, with that, I, I will, I, I'll stop there and, and let's, uh, let's take this conversation to the greater public and let, let's not be afraid to uh, call a spade a spade and name drop. Let's call them out. Thank you very much. Awesome, thanks so much, Ernest. Um, uh, we've got lots of uh, questions to get to, and I'm going to pass it to my colleague. Uh, for those of you who know the uh, the Wilderness Committee, you know that uh, M is the brains of the operation. She does most of the important work around here. I just host the webinars, um, but she's the one that's uh, that's getting out on the on the on the territory and and supporting and helping uh, with nations like Mom Tagela. And uh, yeah, I just want to, uh, to to honor her work in organizing this webinar and, and lots of our great uh, events. Too. Too. Um, em, I'll pass it over to you. And uh, yeah, if you want to read out some of the questions and, uh, and our speakers can, can jump up and answer them. Sure thing. Thanks, Torrance. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Em. And just to repeat what Torrance said, um, I've been working to support Mom Tequila for several years now, um, mostly working on the land at Gila D, helping to organize work parties, checking out logging in the territory and also helping with fundraising, mapping and, and also organizing public events. So I'm just gonna check out the questions here. It looks like some of them were answered already um, via the Q&A, just in, the, in text format, but I'm gonna read some out anyways. Um, we have a question from Crystal, Maddleby. And that is, can we have potlatches slash, slash feasts on our territory? Looks like Randy already answered that in text, but maybe you wanna unmute and say something about that or Seneca, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I think any opportunity we get, uh, go and utilize the land. I mean, it's ours. It's not something we should be asking. It's something we should just be doing. I mean, it's your inherent right. Um, it's like I say, when um, my daughter was born, I just went to eat Seekin and did a ceremony uh, on the beach and it was amazing. And then I did another ceremony in Hiladi, um, you know, so yeah. And I think anytime we do that, I document it. I recorded all of those too. So I could show them knowing then I thought, you know, one day I'm going to end up in court and I'm going to have this as evidence that, you know, we have never stopped using our land. And now my children are going to carry these names and they're going to have these uh, experiences that they can share as they grow up that, you know what, they got their names in their traditional, you know, their traditional places. So the more the more we can do it, the more we should be doing it is my thing, you know, like seriously get out, like use the land as much as you can and make it known that it's yours because it does, it belongs to you. That's great. Thanks, Randy. Um, another question from Tara. Are there plenty of elk and berries for harvesting or has that, or is that to be revived for food security purposes? Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of 
berries, the uh, some berries are coming into bloom soon. You see the little buds and, you know, we got other berries. And like I said, we're seeing uh, some some fish finally coming back up on the on the beach and there's fishermen there all the time I see. So, and um, every time I drive up there, you know, like there's a wash out for elk signs uh, in the all over the North Island. So it's, one time I was driving up there and I stopped at the Campbell River gas station, Indian gas station. They're like, careful, there's a there's a herd out there, <laughs> out there. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Dakota. I see a, a question from Serena here for Randy. Hey, Serena, good to see you here. Um, what's some of the most exciting evidence you've found or information you've learned during these Tree of Life surveys? I think it's really just the like discovery. You know, I mean, I'm learning about my own territory, you know, more and more you know, the more I get to just be out there. And I think that's the exciting part, you know. Um, last year, like I was, you know, I always kind of mentioned, we ended up at a place called Leakum and it was, um, you know, had this midden mound that was like 33 meters high. And, you know, there's, I think there's like a house impression on the top, uh, but then, you know, 400 yards up behind that, there's like all these massive culturally modified trees. So you could just tell like there's so much evidence of how significant this area was. And, you know, the more I find like that, more areas I find, you know, that's, that's exciting for me. So, you know, more, more reason to go back and probably start like developing in those areas, building maybe a small cabin or something and allowing our people, you know, going back to the earlier question, and doing things like that so our people know that these places are there and that they can go and use them i think that's the the ultimate goal again is just to get out and you know build things that's going to help welcome our people to use it for whatever they want ceremonies and you know celebrations and feasting all of that thanks randy um i see a message here a question from percy what do you say to the loggers currently working and living within your territory? And how do you kind of hope to manage that resistance to, to change? That is, I would say, quite a loaded question. Um, you know, these people, uh, it's all they've known for generations and they really believe it's their livelihood. And the government reinforces that. We hear uh, the prime minister always talking about national interest, this national interest, that. And, um, you know, honestly, I would put it on the government. You know, it's they're the ones who are letting this unhindered logging happening. I would put it on the corporations. They're the ones, these are the entities that are bigger than, bigger than individuals, right? You know, I would never blame an individual for, for wanting to, to make a living. And uh, I believe, that, you know, the government should be helping or have these programs in place to help retrain uh, these people into sustainable uh, jobs that will actually last more than this generation because it's a dying, uh, it's a, it's a dying uh, field right now. Like how much old growth we got left, you know, what, it was like 2.7% on Vancouver Island. And then so are they going to just wait every 60 years for their their new cut blocks to grow up and cut those down you know that's that's not right you know and like what are we well where are the where are the the trees for our canoes the trees for our our, our totem poles again imagine a west coast without totem poles um so yeah that's um it's, an, uh, it's something to put onto the industry, onto the corporations, onto the government. And, you know, I'm, I would be all for um, any, any other solutions and then trying to, to, to help um, communities, right? So we all live up here, right? We're all, um, 
have a, a friend and, and, and mentor, uh, uh, Char, uh, Charlene uh, George, and, and um, she says, you know, we're all in the same canoe. And uh, so we need to look forward in a, in a way together as a, as a community. Rural communities aren't just indigenous communities. There's white people up here too. There's, there's black people, there's, there's people uh, from uh, East India. Um, um, so yeah, you know, we, we all need to find a way forward together. Great, thanks, Dakota. Um, I see another question from Crystal. Um, it says, she says, um, do Klawitsis benefit from the logging that comes out of your territory? And if so, does that mean when we get our feet planted, do they pay that back to our people? No. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yes, actually, they 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 get yes, a they benefit. <laughs> they get benefits. Yes, do they pay it back? Will they have to pay it back? No, no, they they won't. I believe you can uh, look up all of the agreements on the. There's some government websites you can see all of that information on how much. Uh, how much that they're making off of all of these um, deals. But yeah, <laughs> what Randy said, we won't see a cent of that. <laughs> okay, enough said, <laughs> cool. Um, next question from our friend, Mark Worthing. How can people donate or make a contribution to Montegala efforts? We were going to get to this, but we'll just launch into that now. This is question. Dakota, well, you want to? Add? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Well, we'll probably have uh, multiple ways uh, of helping fund, you know, Montegala uh, resurgence. Um, as for um, helping the, the builds on the land, uh, we have a, a chuffed page, uh, which uh, will be uh, advertised on uh, the Twitter page, Hila DV for Hila DV Village. Um, so that's on Twitter. Um, I'll, I typed it in the chat, I'll type it in again. Uh, just look that up. Um, and that'll be a way to help the, the future builds in the land, like, uh, yeah, so, um, and I'm sure somebody else can speak to, and there's the page right there, um, and I'm sure somebody else can, can speak to in ways we, you can help uh, fund uh, our court case. Seneca. Um, well, yeah, like we have a, we do have a, we do have a, I mean, you could send an e-transfer directly to mumptagillafund at gmail.com. Um, but I think when it comes time to the actual court case, I think it's just, we're definitely going to need just human support, people support, the love from people to keep us going. I think that's going to be the most crucial type of support that we're going to need because, you know, um, as you know, like court cases are so, um, the, well, they're foreign to us, really. Uh, the court system is not our system, doesn't belong to our people. Um, but, um, you know, and, and so I think, yeah, that's the kind of support um, that, that we're definitely going to need moving forward but um we we do have a we do have an e-transfer that you know if people want to make donations to our court case absolutely randy do you have anything to add to that uh no no i think that was good son all support is good support Perfect. Seneca, I just want to verify, was it mumptagalafund at gmail.com? I can put it in the chat right now. Correct. Okay. 
you can check it if I got it correct, but there we go. Um, any other questions? I have another question from Crystal saying, can we get a tour set up for those who haven't been in our territory? Uh, that's on the agenda, actually. Yeah, we're working on something very soon. Unfortunately, with the, uh, you know, coming out of this pandemic now, hopefully we can start to gather. Um, we've had passings at home, but we're trying to get a gathering together as an info session for all Mumptagila people where we can talk about everything that has been spoken tonight. Um, so we can share information with our people and, and also encourage a lot of our people to come out and support and get involved if they want to. And then the next step after that is chartering some boats and getting us out into our territory so people can actually go and reconnect with the land that way. And, you know, we can start piecing it all together and, you know, starting to visualize what it is that we're actually fighting for here. Perfect. Thanks, Randy. Um, yeah, we're kind of, we're looking at a date um, sometime at the end. I, I'm thinking at the end of June and we'll, we'll be in touch with, uh, I guess, our, our community. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Seneca. I have a quick question from Eartha. Good to see you, Eartha. Um, how many members are there from the Montegala Nation? Yeah, I was kind of uh, writing it onto that. Uh, that's actually the work we're doing right now is we're actually going and gathering signatures and getting to know you know how many descendants there actually are today you know it's a hard one to count because we don't have a band administration again but i mean this is all a big part of it is bringing our people back together so we can you know do that count but in guessing i would say close to a thousand that's my guess because some of us have really big families <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would uh, like to um, speak to uh, the tour um, question as well. Um, you know, uh, one of the things uh, I've been trying to do is get a bus that can take people out to to Helity and. Um, you know, we're in the process of trying to really repair the roads. It's their old, old logging roads. And um, so, again, it's, it's all about money. And, and then we're trying to just, we're in the process of building it and having bunk houses and stuff like that built. So, um, you know, I, I encourage people to come out as much as possible. And we have a map, I think. I think uh, M can... Um, my good friend M can uh, uh, provide provide that and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. Speaking of maps, I'm gonna try and share a map that we made from Tagela that that shows some of the industrial logging activity and fish farms in the territory. I'm not. I've never done this over Zoom, sharing a PDF, but I'm gonna try that in a second here. Um, but before I do that, there's one more question here that we'll take from Tara. And the question is, are your laws being codified or have land titles have land titles to be achieved first? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that it, <laughs> We are not in a position, I think, to do all of it. It's a lot of work. And at this point in time, I think uh, we're, our, our, you know, we're kind of um, making sure that we start out with the kind of what's important first. We're, we're, you know, just at this point in time, focusing on the court case and the, you know, um, Dakota and and my auntie are, are making sure that they're, you know, making sure that we have presence on the land and that, you know, that 
that kind of stuff is happening and and it's it's on the to-do list and, and I'm sure it's it's in there somewhere and I'm hoping that you know once we kind of can get more manpower in terms of you know administrative um stuff happening I, I, we'll be able to sort of do all of those wonderful things and I think it's there it's really prioritizing you know our survival right now in terms of you know being able to be recognized, getting, staying, having a presence on the land, you know, building, um, and, and bring, and calling our people home. Like those are all our, like, those are our priorities at this point in time, like calling our people home, having, you know, a presence. And, and so it, it is on the, it is there, it's there and it's on the, on the to-do list and, you know, but we have our own laws, you know, that, um, you know, they're, they're already there. They're part of our, our oral traditions. Um, so that's, I don't know. Randy, do you have anything to add to that? No, again, you're bang on. Dakota, Dakota. <laughs> no, you, you uh, spoke eloquently to the topic as always. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, well, thanks so much uh, for all those great questions and uh, and for the answers. Um, we're coming up on seven here. Uh, I wanted to throw it back to each speaker just for a, a word or two in closing, if you've got one. Um, maybe a, another way that uh, that folks can help out. Uh, M, if you want to drop the uh, the chuffed link into the chat again, and for the folks watching on Facebook, uh, I was trying to figure out how to put the link in the live while we're doing the live, but I couldn't. But after it's done, I'll, uh, I'll sort that out and make sure that link uh, gets in there so that folks watching uh, on Facebook can see the link in the in the comments. Um, so yeah, sort of last closing words or, or, or final thoughts on how uh, folks listening or, or watching the recording later can can help support the Mom to Gala. Uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to, uh, yeah, maybe Dakota first. Oh, I, I think it's already been spoken to, but you know, this work is it's heavy work and you know, a lot of sacrifice has, has had to be made to, to do it from, from all of us. And, um, you know, like time, money, you know, I've got three, four jobs and this, <laughs> this is the fifth one and it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't pay, you know, I've put in putting my own money and time into it for, for four or five years now. And um, uh, you can write me a personal check. <laughs> but um, no, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just, I'm both humbled and honored to, to be doing it and being part of it. So um, yeah, uh, I'm, you know, uh, learning what my grandfather has done and, and you know, the feast he had uh, on our territories and, um, it, you know, I, I know what we're doing is, is, is right, you know, and it's, and, uh, and we can't let corporations and governments uh, tell us uh, otherwise or, um, you know, corrupt people like John Smith, uh, make money off of our territories, which, you know, is I'm sure is going into uh, into his pocket, not even the Tlaleed sees people's, you know. Um, yeah, so I, I wanna um, say that, you know, um, it was for the month Gila and, and, you know, and I honor the Tlaleed sees on my Tlaleed sees side. Um, that's where my name Khanalas comes from and, and, um, yeah, so uh, you know, I want to I want to do this in a good way, and so that's 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 my that's my closing statement. Thanks so much, uh, Randy or Seneca. Uh, just want to thank everybody for attending tonight and and listening to what we have to say. Um, 
And uh, I guess I just want to acknowledge our our Gigame for kind of leading the way, all of our, and then as well as our, you know, our women and all of the people that have been standing with us um, without the support. Um, I don't know. I mean, we would still be doing this, but I think, um, you know, it would be a much longer journey. And so um, we appreciate the support of, of all the people who have been walking with us. Um, and I hope that you will continue to walk with us in, in our fight. And um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Sen. Thank you, Dakota. And again, thank you, Torrance and M for this time and sharing everything that we are up to and you know all this hard work. Uh, yeah, so just to reiterate everything Dakota and Seneca are saying, you know, I think, yeah, we're very grateful today to everybody that has come forward to help. Um, you know, it's been a, a pretty interesting journey. <laughs> I mean, for myself, you know, born and raised in Alert Bay and, you know, coming from our small communities and then, you know, going on to the university grounds and having students, you know, talk about Mount Tequila people <laughs> so far away from our territory. And you're like, wow, this is amazing. And then there's people all over Victoria and everything now who are, you know, talking about who the Mount Tequila people are. And it's through work like this it's through work people you know helping such as Torrance and M and you know and everybody else um, who just wants to take the time and see you know us you know reconnect with our land and knowing what our history is and I think you know when we talk about Canada and we talk about reconciliation you know there's a lot of pain for Indigenous people across this country when the term reconciliation comes up because we don't feel it at all. You know, we're still fighting for our land. You know, there's no recognition at all when it comes to land and Indigenous people. And I think, you know, while we're starting to uncover the remains of children across this country and, you know, the impacts that the impact that has on families, you know, and the residential school survivors. You know, there's so much trauma still, you know, and we see that, you know, very closely with our own families who are residential school survivors. Growing up in Alert Bay, you know, that's where the residential school was, you know, and we, me and Seneca, I think we were the last generation where the school was still used for us, you know, where we were going to school there, you know. So it's still very close to us. And all of this work is all tied together. You know, it's all tied into this country of Canada, you know, removing us from the land and forcing our ancestors in the residential school and putting a ban on our culture and making it illegal for us to practice our ways and celebrate, you know, through our ceremonies and all of that. And here we are still fighting and resilient and now is the time where we want to bring our people home and reconnect with the land. So all of those things that we have as Indigenous people can come through and, you know, and our children can carry their identity with pride. Because I know even our generation has struggled with that, you know, you know, struggled with racism and struggled with, you know, wanting to celebrate who we are, you know, and sharing our traditional names and thinking people are going to laugh at us or make fun of, fun of us in ways, you know, or, you know, like, it's, it's really difficult. And I'm hoping that, you know, the work that we do, we can pave a way for the next generations to see that, you know what, there's pride and there's joy and there's beauty in, you know, Indigenous people and cultures. And there's so much to be you know, that can come from connecting with the land again, you know, and I always say in ancient times, one would lean its forehead against the tree and breathe life into the tree and say a prayer and, and in the prayer saying, as I breathe life into you, you will breathe life into me. 
And then that was the prayer that created this relationship where then one would pull the bark. And by pulling the bark, you would release that spirit within the tree to be with you. And it would protect you and guide you. And it was a relationship that we honored and upheld. And if that's a ritual we can share with each of you who aren't Kwa Kwa Kiwo and to go and connect with the tree and say a prayer and carry that energy and think of us and, and say, hey, you know what, that's a really beautiful thing. And, you know, and to be a part of that, I think that's great. And I think, you know, moving forward, I think, yeah, it can all just start with that. But again, it's it. I just, you know, thank all of you for, you know, supporting us in this work that we're doing because I really truly believe it's for all of us. So, Gila Kessler. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for that. Uh, 702, you three are good, right on, right on time. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll close there uh, for the evening, but I wanna say thanks again uh, to all of you for coming. Uh, of course, uh, to our speakers and for, for everyone listening, at home, uh, we'll stay stay tuned. Um, you know, keep an eye out for for uh, what's happening with Mum Tagela. Um, the Wilderness Committee will continue to to amplify and spread the word uh, when called on to do so, and uh, things like this. So, um, yeah, I think we all need to uh, rally behind and support this community because the work that's happening is is uh, is the way we need to be uh, heading on these on these lands and and in this country that we call Canada. So. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks so much again um, for all the words tonight and, and to everyone for coming and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I think my um, auntie wants to say something before you okay. go. Okay. Oh. Sure, Seneca, what, what's their name? Das Ambas on the... Oh, Sass, yeah. She's got her hand. <laughs> Let me find her. All right. Sas, do you want to unmute and say a few words? Glad you could join us. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yep. we can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to say that um, I'm really proud of the efforts that my niece is doing and the work that's happening, which is so important. Um, and that moving back to the land has never been a question that needed to be asked of anyone. It is something that had to be done. And I am incredibly proud of all the work that's been done in the background. I'm basically just a person that made the move onto the land, which could never be possible without all the support. And uh, with the guidance of the ancestors, especially with my dad. Did, uh, did you have more to share, Sas, or? No, other than to say that um, what we're doing here is really, really important work. Um, rematriating of the land is uh, has to be one of the most important work that we do as the nation, as people. Um, the land needs us. The territory is uh, part of our DNA. It's something we've walked with. And the ancestors uh, really, really need us just as much as we need them for guidance. All right. Thanks so much uh, for folks who, who don't know Tsas is a, a Mamtegela matriarch who I, I believe is joining us uh, live from, from the territory uh, tonight. The internet yeah. connection is crystal clear. I'm, I'm glad to hear your voice so clearly. Um, and I think uh, your words are powerful ones to end on. So thanks so much for sharing with us tonight.
alive from puberty. (laughs) (laughs) All right, take care. Have a safe night, everyone. Bye, Kesta. Bye, Kesta.